No boat in the boathouse today. This section of the coast hasn't been used in decades. Ooh. Yay! Oh, my Come on, let's get some more health. Like HP to heal our health. One dollar fifteen. The boathouse is shoddily constructed. A strong breeze might blow it over. Well, it hasn't been blown over yet. Can't go through there. Ancient paint is peeling off the roof of this shaded bench covered in rust. A scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. Look, Kim, even more bullet holes. Something's definitely gone down here. Visual calculus, heroic. Why this many bullet holes? Plus one bullet holes on the plaza, bullet holes on the backyard, know about the revolution. Okay. Why this many bullet holes? A row of ghostly shades stand facing the wall. There are many of them. A dozen at least. The heads lowered and eyes blindfolded. It's quiet. No sound. No movement. Ten meters away, other shades are lined up in an orderly manner. Automatic rifles prime. A gust of wind blows by. The coats of the firing squad flap slowly in the breeze. A single person stands on the side. The sun blazes high up in the sky, baking the planks, the sand, your skin. The order was carried out in the afternoon. A long time has passed since the moment of this fusillading. Rain and brine have since washed all the blood away. Not a trace remains. What is this? The abundance of bullet holes leads to two options. Either an inordinate amount of executions were performed here, or they did not use a conscience round, where only one soldier has the loaded rifle. Looks like this was a mass execution with everyone fully armed. Look at the people against the wall. Look at the line of soldiers. Look at the person standing on the side. Kim, who... Who was who in this execution? Look at the people against the wall. A host of men, probably in everyday clothes, ragged from the conflict and covered in dust. They were not sitting, a common practice for executions in some nations, as really? demonstrated oh. by the height level of the bullet holes. They stand, facing the wall. It's impossible to discern any details about their personality or background. Ordinary people. Familiar. Each and every one of them. Who were they? Comrades. The forsaken. The wretched. Who tried to rise against the horrors of the world. Look at the line of soldiers. Seven men in combat uniforms and dark coats. Holding automatic rifles aimed at the people. Soldiers from some side. But from which one? Uh. Men of duty. Dark duty. Who were they? Murderers, twisted by orders. Young boys forced into killing. Look at the person standing on the side. The commandant, the one who gives the order. Machine gun fire crackling through the air. The lights of the muzzle flashes dancing on his face. Kim, who was who in this execution? I don't know. I don't know who died here, lined up beside that horrible wall. It could have been any of the parties involved in the revolution. At first, the lieutenant doesn't say a word. He just stares at the wall. Perhaps the ones executed here were the loyalist conservatives killed by the communists at the start of the civil war. Or it could have been the communists put to death during the last stretch of the conflict by the coalition forces. It could even have been the employees of the failed R&D center down the coast as their building was taken over by the revolutionaries. Or maybe... You mentioned coalition forces. Could it have been them against the war? Yeah. It's very unlikely the coalition forces were the ones who died here. They were always the last ones against the wall. Hmm. To be honest, if a coalition member was anyone in this situation, it was a commandant, hmm. the superior giving the orders. 
could buy. A cold sea wind blows away the figures. The door is not only barred shut, it is inaccessible. Oh. What's that? Plus two logic. What is that? A small wire framing inside this futuristic looking hat. Gives it an aerodynamic shape of a swoop sky's helmet, but one of its protective covers the wearer's ears and eyebrows swinging down the dry. Minus perception, but plus two logic. I think that's acceptable. I wanna put I wanna put points into perception. And interfacing, I think. Six dollars. The liquid has an unearthly blue tint, the kind that might or might not, but definitely does glow in the dark. Like a Nuka Cola. <laughs> no. Quantum. Nuka Quantum. This is 987 98 98 7 pure alcohol. Keep it away from an open flame. Okay. We are so smart. We have such high logic. The sign says entry, entry into inter dart. How do I go there? An old ticket taker booth, no longer in operation. Hmm. Bars cover these long dusty windows. Oh, so big. Oh. The remaining windows rattle from a strong gust of wind. They're covered in a thick layer of grime. They must have been like this for 40 years. Try to see inside. Dripping water falls from a high place. All you can see is the shadow of a collapsing staircase. There's rust and corrosion on the bars. They're foaming with it. And a small layer of white salt from the sea. Lieutenant, can you make out what's inside? Points at the windows. No. I won't even try. You know... He takes his glasses off. I had a partner once. They called him Eyes because he had to show me things. It's that bad. Okay, I won't ask you again to <laughs> look at things. This partner of his, Eyes, things didn't end well. Mm. It saddens him to say his name. Don't even ask. He wouldn't answer. Maybe some other small talk. Can you still shoot though? Just nod. Let's not... Let's not insult him, you know? And Mikhail noticed the windows, especially with how there are no windows on the south side. This was to deal with. A blonde man stands next to his son, pointing to the weather-torn ruins. He sees you approaching and smiles. You officers, come to investigate the historic subtext of West Martinez? I'm Tran Heilostam. Trash. You must be Kim Kitaragi, right? I was just telling my son about this building. Not a lot of people realize the historic significance here. Very rich in hypertext. Nice to meet you. The lieutenant nods. Hold on, hypertext? Wait, was what was that about the windows before? You and Kim know each other? Hold on, hypertext? Yes, hypertext. Young Carp and the collection of cultural hyperlinks. Wait, what was that about the windows before? Oh yes, so Mikhail. They had to deal with monitor glare, especially in the summer. They still had vector monitors back then. That was 49 years ago. So they didn't have windows on the south wall. You and Kim know each other? No, I can't say that we've met before. But I've heard of Kim, of course. Mikhail, say hi to the officers. He rests his hand on the boy's shoulder. The child stays hidden behind the hem of his father's coat, clutching to his worm-themed worm, worm colouring book. Mikhail's a little tired today. We spent all night trying to run Orbis on his radio computer. Have you heard of it? It's a programming language used in Grad. Quite tricky, but he wanted to play this Grad-made adventure program. We've been getting really into verbs lately. The man speaks in the artificial cadence of a professor. Okay. Or someone who's been on too many radio shows. <laughs> but I assume you're not here for giant verbs when there are so many real things to see. Just as I was telling Mikhail before, this is where the Coalition landed in 08. We could be standing on what is the most interesting landmark in Revachol West. He points to the building again. This man is your half-brother. You feel it. But why? Well, get a load of this guy. He really enjoys his trivia. Mm. 
The Orbis programming language was named after its inventor, Victor Orbis, a cybernetician from Grad. They run Vox in the Occidental countries. What's so fascinating about an empty old building? You look like someone who has money. Do you have any money? Great, thank you for all the interesting information. What's so fascinating about a building? Aha, but it's not just any empty old building. He raises his hand to his eyes, springtime sun warming his handsome face. All four of you turn to admire the mirror before you. What not a lot of people know is, this used to be the R&D department of Felt Electrical. And Felt, which now sells in cartridges mostly, was once a top dog in the turn of the century cybernetics boom. Hold on, what's R&D? Look at the building looming over you. It looks old and weathered with seagulls picking apart its stone and metal carcass. Bushy undergrowth has taken hold of the collapsed rooftop. Some kind of bird has set up a nest on a broken windowsill. Wait, what's an R&D department? Apologies, it's an acronym for research and development. <laughs> they don't use it anymore. He smiles brightly, laugh lines around his eyes. You're probably more familiar with RTD, research and technological development. Maya Kalpa, you are not familiar with that one either. <laughs> this man is a bookhead. A bookhead. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard of this field, electric, felled electrical. That's not surprising. Only a vestigial ink cartridge and ferrotape manufacturer remains. He adjusts his suit jacket. They started out as a midway electronics outfit in Königstein two centuries ago. Königstein. After an aggressive move to Revachol, Feld became a global player in the emerging personal electronics market of the pre-revolutionary era. Still, Tricentennial was beating them in business machines. But Felt had an ace up their sleeve. Or should I say they were developing an ace up their sleeve? I'm mixing my metaphors here. What was that ace? Very interesting. Let's get back to this later. What was that ace? It was here in Martinez, possibly in this very building, that they developed prototypes for a... Uh, tape computer he pauses for effect oh a tape computer mm -hmm. an elegant folding mechanism of rollers and ferrotape ribbons portable enough to be a take it home solution revolutionizing business machines possibly even bring them to the average consumer thanks Trent which is a feat of engineering even today's giants Rain, ICN and Zam haven't achieved Damn. yet that reminds me of the developers of this game I can't remember what they're what they are, but Zam, I think it's, yeah, I, I can't remember. What happened? Indeed. What? The revolution! The boy wipes his nose on his sleeve. Unfortunately, their moonshot project never made it to the market. Feld's move to Revachol backfired. The revolutionary government liquefied their assets and expropriated those very advanced prototypes, possibly from this very building or one of the adjacent ruins. He pauses, pointing to the other buildings, then continues. All of this was built by Felt, even a boardwalk. Wild Pines built Martinez proper as a resort for their middle management. Felt built this side of town for R&D. You're saying that Feld Electrical built this boardwalk? Look under your feet. What happened to the engineers, the company people? You're saying that they built this boardwalk? Yes, they even built a pleasure wheel, but that got destroyed in the war. Pleasure wheel? A pleasure wheel? Well, like a ferris wheel? The lieutenant looks wistfully at the horizon as if picturing gondolas rising to the sky. Perhaps reminded of a childhood memory. It's clear he would prefer there were a big wheel lighting up the coast. Yes, to lure in their star engineers. This part of Martinez was nothing but reeds before it fell the right. They had to make the prospect of living here attractive. It was supposed to become a global center for innovation in cybernetics. But history had other plans. What happened to the engineers, the company people? Oh, I'm afraid it didn't end well for the boys. The curse. But this story is a bit too dark for little Mikael here. Now, if you were to ask about tape computers... Bye, Mikael. <laughs> Wait, is he saying that we should just bypass the excesses of the revolution? Turn to Mikael. He means they all died at the hands of the communists. Tape computers, right? Tape computers. He nods, wind, wind tossing his suit jacket. 
What did the revolutionaries do with these advanced type computers? They used them for military communications, but also to write and send out press releases. The most notorious example being Le Decret de Mars. Le Decret de Mars? What was that? What's the Mars Decree? I mean the radio transmission sent out to news agencies and world governments by the newly oh. created Commune of Revachol on the 7th of March in the year 02. Are we going to learn about um, the frequencies um, that we found on the lorry? Um, there was a weird frequency that Kim hadn't even heard about. I wonder if we'll learn about it from Trant. A short-lived legislative foundation for a short-lived utopia. It's a beautiful piece of text, actually. A singer-songwriter I know, Charette, called it a love poem to River Shawl on her political concept album, Bon Bessier, Dans bon Limit. Bessier. You should read it. Dien Every Dien. local library in River Shawl stocks a copy of the decree. Okay. Maybe, um, Placence has it. I tried to get Mikhail to memorize it. Tried to. Someone was much too interested in worms to be paying any attention. Oh my god, give him a break. He's probably like four or five, I think, the game said. Oh my god, let him be a kid. How did those tape computers work? Did they work like radio computers? Actually, no one knows. No one even knows what a computer made entirely of tape would look like. But word has it, they were very elegant. Exquisite, alien-looking, turn-of-the-century hardware. He raises his finger, remembering something. Buckle up. Buckle Ten years up. ago, I did a little freelancing, I guess you could say. I was a special consultant for an exhibition at the Womty Domty Dom Center in Vedeport, Oranje. <laughs> it raised the same questions, and we Alrighty. had lengthy discussions with Paul Ockerman, who was head curator at the time. This was before the twins, Keith and Guy Jews joined the team, trying to... Wait, did he just say Womty Domty Dom Center? Yes, he did. He did it. He said... Wompty Dompty Dom Center, like it's the most natural thing in the world. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is a Wompty Dompty Dom Center? And who the hell are Keith and Guy <laughs> Juiced? Okay, the Wompty Dompty Dom Center, Paul Ockerman, Keith and, and Guy Juiced? What are you talking about? Okay, back to where were we? Type computers, I think. What are you talking about? The Wompty Dompty Dom Center for Contemporary Arts. The exhibition itself drew on Lagerman's notion of memory, and so there were some parallels. That's why the head curator, Paul Ockerman, chose to... You're making this up, turn to the lieutenant. Kim, is he making this up? Come on, there is no place called the Wompty Dompty Dom Center of Arts. It's an arty thing. I don't doubt that it is probably a real thing. You're making this up. <laughs> in fact, I'm not. The Wompty Dompty oh. Dom Center is a place you can visit if you're ever in Vredefort and are ever in the market for an exhibition space slash contemporary art research center. <clears throat> he clears his throat. But perhaps I should return to the tape computers. As I was saying, the device itself was very elegant, fragile even. One could write directly on the tape using a special chemical solution. The machine would then analyze the handwriting, perform operations and project output onto a white screen. It was a beautiful, delicate thing. This guy loves to talk. <laughs> Made of black film and folding tape structures. Not cool. I've seen cooler things than that. The RCM should get some of those. Cool. Very, very cool. Though I understand the socio-economic causes of the revolution, it pays me to imagine the revolutionary setting fire to this precious device. But so they did. The felt playback experiment vanished into the fires of 07. Wait, the felt playback experiment? Why did the revolutionaries destroy it? Wait, the felt playback experiment? Yes, the official name of the prototype. Some sources report it as the felt playback experience. experience. But those are incorrect. Why did the revolutionaries destroy it? Who knows? Maybe it was an accident, or maybe they didn't want the technology to end up in the wrong hands. Either way, they're all gone now. All three versions of the prototype. Nothing but debris and ashes remain inside that building. You're saying that failed electricals... Oh, I already did that. Uh, I wanted to ask something else. But of course. <laughs> what else? 
He smiles and ruffles his kid's head. I want to hear about the Feld building. No. You look like someone who has money. No. Great. Thank you for all the interesting information. Uh, yeah. Do you have any money? I do have some money, yes. But that's not what's really important here. He brushes it off like it's not a thing at all. He's not going to give you money. What are you doing? Clearly you were just profiling. Everyone else gives... Everyone else? Yeah, I was just profiling. That's right. No, I mean, come on. You need the money. If it's not a thing, he can give you some. Could I have some of that unimportant money then? I don't want your money. I just wanted to see whether my profiting skills were working. Profiling skills were working. I hate just asking people for money. Like, it makes me feel like a bum. Like, I just... I do it because I'm assuming that the game, it's just a, you know, it doesn't, it's just a way to get money, like a gameplay thing, like I don't think it has any bearing on what people think of us, I hope not anyway. <laughs> I don't want your money. Of course detective, I wouldn't have assumed anything else. Matter of fact. He looks up again, a playful hint shining in his eyes. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but the Vespertine Department of Justice has published a rather interesting paper on the criminal profiling in former oh socialist states. What have I done? Have you read it? Yes, I'm sure I have. If not, then you definitely shit. If not for tips and tricks, then just for theoretical curiosity. Anyway, that's just a little something that sprang to mind. You were saying? He squeezes his son's shoulder lightly. Uh, thank, great, thank you for all that interesting information. No, thanks to you for having me and little Mikael here to pick your brain. A very interesting conversation indeed. You picked my brain? I felt like you did 90% of the talking. Pick your brain? Yes! <laughs> if anything, this was rather one-sided. He did the talking. Yeah. Whatever. Exactly. At least we gained a thought though, I think. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, Wompty Dompty Center. Uh, 42 minutes, three hours, five hours, four hours, thanks. You see a once bright mural towering above you. The signage has peeled off over the years, but you can still make out Feld Electrical R&D. Turn away. Okay. Okay. The fence blocks the path. No way on from here. Oh, quick travel. Buzz, hum. The electricity flows through the wires with audible power. Ooh, is that a piece of clothing? A dead phone, a smashed receiver, like someone hung up too hard. Someone must have worked hard to smash the plastic dome. A metal payphone under a yellow plastic dome. You could use it to call someone, unless you're out of change. Who would I call? Pick up the handset. Hey God, could I have my money back? You hear the tone. I don't need it the anymore. The machine is inoperable. Oh my God. Oh, 10 cents. Okay. Um, put 10 cents in and dial a random number. Okay. Calling. Still calling. This feels wrong. Should you be doing this? End of tone. Someone picks up. Pierre, is that you, Pierre? Oh my God. Yes, it's me, Pierre. It might be. What's Pierre like? No, it's not Pierre. No, this is not Pierre. Do you have any news about Pierre? Who is Pierre? He is my sister's grandson. He used to visit me as a lad. Fine young man. But who are you then? A salesman of some sort? Modern goods are rubbish and I can't afford them anyhow. It's a shame what you did to our country. The woman moans and the phone lines howl in unison with her. I'm not a salesman. I was just calling a random number and you somehow ran with it. 
Yes, I'm a salesman. What exactly do we do to your country? I don't know who I am, but who are you? No, I'm a police officer. To hell with the police. To hell with you. Okay. Her voice is drowned in white noise. Sounds like waves washing a beach, growing in volume until the call suddenly disconnects. I mean, a policeman might actually be able to help you find your son, but you know. You get a sinking feeling. It makes you look if Lieutenant Kitsuragi overheard you. To your relief, he did not. Is this a different number? Calling. Still calling. Again? Seriously? I thought it was Someone a with a masculine voice picks up. Hello, Gerard speaking. Hello, Gerard. Technically speaking, your electricity. No. What you are is a surprise. Get his wife on the phone. Hey Gerard, get your wife for me, will you? Is electricity there? I need to speak with electricity. Oh, electricity, please. Gerard, what a douche name. Change it. Change your name. Sorry, I run number. Uh, is electricity there? No, but I got a feeling I'll kick your ass is going to make an <laughs> appearance if you ever call this number again. Have a good one. Asshole. Phone hanging up. Disconnect tone. Alright, let's leave. <laughs> Electricity. The rear, the rear tire of a motor carriage adorns these reds. Rust eaten letters read Mazut. What a Nolan, that's a Nolan group, what an unsuccessful model, okay. You feel the shadow of a very large building fall on you. Dusty pews in the shadows, many seem to be missing. An altar shrouded in dark or something like that, it's too dark to tell. 52 cents. The sign reads Saint Brune. Let's go in the church. Heavy wooden doors, more than twice your height, stand shut in front of you. The rectangular sea-worn ornamentation appears in stark contrast to the padlock, carelessly drilled into the wood. Rattle the doors to see if they're open, inspect the carpentry, take a closer look at the padlock. This cheap-looking padlock is sturdily built. It shackles together a hasp and a staple screwed into the wooden door. The lock is adorned with a yellow sticker. It'll be easier to break the staple than the lock. Also, that sticker is interesting, somehow. Rattle the doors to see if they're open. Nothing happens, only the sound of the padlock rattling against the door. I don't think that's going to work. Inspect the carpentry. The carving on the door is block-like and angular, like the church itself. Two large beams shoot downwards, sinking into the wood before they reach the threshold. Run your hand across the beam. The surface Flipper. is smooth oh. from the wind, but moist to the touch. Look at the sticker. You see a yellow circle with two X's and a big curve below them that looks like a mouth. You're pretty sure you haven't seen it before, but what the symbol depicts is clear enough. A smiling dead guy. Mm. The curve makes it smile and the X's make it dead. There is something blindingly modern about this symbol. Its modernness puts to shame everything you've seen before. What makes it so modern? Have you seen this symbol before? Point to it. Take another look for the boring... Take another look at the boring padlock for absurdity's sake. What makes it so modern? It's the contrast between the cherry, chemical yellow, and the rigor mortis. As if the cherry guy didn't know he was dead, or the dead guy didn't care that he was. Either way, you get the sense the forces of future are at work here. Have you seen this symbol before? Point to it. He takes off his glasses and uses a blue handkerchief to thoroughly wipe them clean before inspecting the sticker. Then he looks up, pauses, and replies, No. What does it look like to you? Looks like a dead man smiling. Suggests junior delinquency. Is it 
Are they referring to the symbol for Nirvana? Like the, because he said yellow. Okay, what is junior delinquency? What is suggestive of junior delinquency here? I haven't seen that sticker before, and I'm not a youth. I agree, it's very modern, but does the cheery guy not know he's dead, or does the dead guy not care that he is? What is the source of the irony here? That level of conceptual thinking is not part of my skill set. Hmm. Ooh. Try to peel off the sticker without ripping it. Inspect the staple. The padlock passes through a staple that's been hastily attached to the wood. Closer inspection reveals that one of the screws is not a screw at all, but a nail. The work has been done recently and is unprofessional, to say the least. Should you want to get through, it might be easier to just pry the whole thing off. Turn to the lieutenant. This is where Mr. Prybar comes in handy. Maybe we should circle the building first and look mm. for another way. The building has seen enough mistreatment. There is a touch of guilt in mm. his voice. Where do you think we should start? Can you hear the pulsing bass underneath the wind? A sure sign of general delinquency, somewhere east of here. There's something on the sea ice there. Try to peel off the sticker, 83%. <laughs> Tool not equipped. Oh, okay. So try to peel off the sticker. There's yes. nothing like the sound of a sticker unpeeling. Now it's stuck to your thumb. Put the sticker in your ledger after the last entry where it belongs. Put the sticker on your ledger right on the cover. Shake it off your thumb and throw it in the wind. Put it right on the cover. Voila. Looks very modern. Oh yes, voila. You're part of the future brigade now, and so is your formerly humdrum ledger. Neon, baby. Alright, um, let's equip the pry bar. Alright, um, yeah, our learning cap is raised here, I think. Perception. Oh, there's so much I want to do. Volition might be a good one. Uh, nah. I I think I want to do either suggestion or drama. I want to do it. I want to do so much, but I'm just thinking of um maybe beefing up the ones that I think are important a little bit more first. Let's go suggestion. Heavy wooden doors, more than twice your height, stand what? shut in front of you. The rectangular sea-worn ornamentation appears in stark contrast to the oh padlock God. carelessly drilled into the wood. Are we gonna... Oh my God. Let's... Tr Fucking hell, this is a white check. A minute or so of mauling away at the lock has led to no success. Oh my God. The pry bar in your hand has given you zero mechanical advantage. You could give me a hand, you know. I'm not as sturdy as you are. Wow, you're even, even weaker than leverage. me? Oh, he's, he's saying that well, he's not fat. <laughs> hey, you surely you're stronger than we are. The doors remain unchanged. Closed with a padlock. Put points into physical instrument. We'll leave. Alright. Let's look around. Maybe we can get in another way. Oh, there's a ladder there. On the roof. <laughs> oh. There's shrub in the way. Mm. Can we jump from there to the roof? These rusty gears used to turn the whole machine. This chain trails off into the ocean, but who knows where. This barrel has been recently discarded. It still smells of fuel oil. Ooh. The building before you housed the engine must have been a big one. An old door, worn by elements, guards the depot. The wind has blown a sand dune in front of it. The door hasn't been opened in a long while. You what see a handle. What is this thing anyway? It's military. A service depot of some sort. Uh, 
used to service what? The washerwoman mentioned a depot up the coast. Mm. She said it was for moving ammo and cargo across the bay. This might be it. It may have been used to service an aerostatic battleship in the atmosphere, or a fortification, like a sea fort in the bay. Interfacing. Hmm. Walk away. Ooh. One rhetoric minus empathy. One drama. Is for instrument conceptualization. Yeah, I don't like the minus empathy. The boardwalk rises to your south. It casts its long shadow over you. Someone has left an unidentifiable article of clothing on this railing. It smells really bad. Take a closer look. It's streaked with dried seagull shit and tangled with pieces of seaweed. A dangling arm suggests that there might be a jacket beneath the crust of filth. It seems likely that it was left in the surf until someone laid it out on this fence. Oh, we can to get the old out. lady to watch it, maybe. Unfortunately, that just seems to have stiffened it into a shapeless mass. Please tell me you're not taking mm -hmm. that with you. Oh, it might be a clue. A clue? You think our suspect is a seagull who's been defecating on unsuspecting jackets? It could have been multiple seagulls. No. Me neither. You should still take it. Yes. I'm going to. Filthy jacket. Savior de Fair. This filthy rag has been at the mercy of the elements for quite some time. It's strict with seagull shit and abnormally stiff from God knows what natural processes. You can't even tell what brand it is. As you hold it in your hands, it makes an uncomfortable crunching sound. Man, how did this jacket get so disgusting? Let's not think about that right now. How did it get so disgusting? It's a sordid, filthy tail. Mm -hmm. Not for the weak. Are you sure you can stomach it? Think about it. It occurs to you that you're not even holding the jacket itself, but rather the thick crust of jetsam and seagull shit that mm -hmm. ensconces it. Gross. Why? Why did you think about it? Look at your hands. They're covered in muck. Ew, 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 flick your hands. Maybe if I wipe my hands on my pants, flick your hands. Now you're just flicking that shit everywhere. This is a disaster. You'll never get the smell out. Vagrants have recently painted the top red. Water drips from it. Minus perception. No, thank you. A coin-operated weighing machine hasn't been used for a decade. A makeshift roof. Vagrants have tried to make the boardwalk habitable. That tarp will keep out in either rain, nor snow, nor wind. A big wine canister. It's open and empty. Oh. The smell. It's awful and familiar. Hold on. That is awful. Cover your nose. What is it? Is it... Isn't it just the rotting fish? What is it? Don't you recognize it? That idiot's pungency. That faintly cloying sweetness. Only death smells like that. It is death. It must be. Kim, what's that smell? Heads up, Lieutenant. Something's not right here. The Lieutenant has already brought a handkerchief <laughs> to his nose. Alright, where's my other one? Careful there, those floorboards look rotten and weak. Okay. There's some tear, an empty cigarette package, and a crumpled kebab wrapper in the trash bin. Examine the tear. Two empty bottles of Tallulah vodka and a can of black potent porter is all you find. A tragedy. The lieutenant looks in the can, eyes watering from the smell. He shakes his head with genuine sadness. Examine the cigarette package. Whoever tossed it here was a heavy smoker. The brand name reads Red Astra. Red Astra is the black market version of Astra cigarettes, known for their high tar content. Examine the kebab wrapper. You see traces of mayonnaise and ketchup on it, as well as a tomato wedge. The rapper reads, Shish Kebab Revachon. 
It's no older than a day or two. No mold yet. Oh my god. Leo. This coin operated viewer has been out of order for years. A man lies on the boardwalk. His limbs oh. bent and neck turned at an unnatural angle. Shit. Right next to him is an empty bottle of spirits. In his cramped hand, a chewing gum wrapper. Hold on. The lieutenant squats next to the corpse and examines his face. Two bulging eyes stare back at him, void of any signs of life. Lividity is faintly pronounced. Whoever this is has been dead for two days. Mm. No longer. We need to investigate. Yeah. He stands up and shivers as a gust of wind blows through his bomber jacket. Another dead body. This is your job. Steal yourself. Calm now. Carefully. Just another day. Just another dead body. Study Breathe. the man. Study the man's clothes. He's wearing mud caked boots, beige trousers, and an old brown leather jacket with a bright blue lining. There are traces of kebab sauce on his chest. A cool leather jacket with a bolt of blue? Oh no. This sounds terribly familiar. Search his pockets. You find some sunflower seeds and a rain soaked library card folded into two. His jacket feels sodden and heavy under your hand. Good. We should take a look at that library card after this is done. Study the man himself. The man has fallen through a crack in the boardwalk and hit his head against the oh. metal bench. Coagulated blood covers his black hair. One of his feet is still dangling through the hole. I thought maybe he might have been murdered because I thought he might have been contorted in a weird way. A bad fall. It might have been dark outside. This place is a minefield mm. in the dark. Examine his face. His expression is dull, like the sea behind him. Drops of water shining on his moustache. His eyes, empty and wide, look frightening in their frozen gaze. Height, 170 to 175 centimeters. Curly hair, stout build, age approximately 50 to 60 years. He was confused when he died. Confused and alone, most likely. Overcome with the awful surprise of it all. Study the surroundings. There's some dried blood on the metal bench, right where the corpse's head rests. The floorboards are rotten and slippery wet around the hole. An empty bottle lies nearby. A chewing gum wrapper is clutched in his fist. Examine the man's head. A dried chunk of blood covers the hair at the back of his head. An open wound. It's sticky and cold to your touch. This is what killed him. Mm. I don't see any other major wounds, do you? It's hard to say. No, just this one on... It's hard to... Uh, no, just this one on the back of his head. Seems like the head wound was fatal. fatal. It's exactly the shape of the bench. Step on the floorboards. They screech under your feet ominously. It's hard to say whether the dead man's weight was the cause of the boardwalk to break. It definitely looks fragile. He could have easily disappeared into the sea through that hole, and you would have never found him. Examine the bottle. A 0.75 litre Tallulah vodka with its cap missing. There's hardly anything left inside. Tear all around us. He looks at two other bottles near the coin-operated viewer, then at your yellow plastic bag. I'd prefer if you didn't collect them this time. It's not proper. True. It feels disrespectful. Examine the chewing gum wrapper. Grabowski Spearmint Chewing Gum. Green leaves on the cover. The man's mouth is half agape from the terror of the fall. Look in. The blackness of death. Stench. You think you see white chewing gum, too? He ate the whole pack, right? It's to cover the smell of alcohol mm -hmm. before going home. The worst thing is, I've seen it before. Almost the same scenario, even the chewing gum. It's always the same. Step back. The entire boardwalk creaks in mm -hmm. the wind as you take a step back. Who is this man? Looks like one of the locals. He'd have to know this spot to come here. You don't. Just walk over here. He looks south, the way you came. But that's just a lazy assumption. 
What do you think? A dead working class man mm -hmm. with a bottle in his hand? Mm -hmm. Don't deceive yourself. You know who this is. We know who this is. It's the working class woman's missing husband, dead on the boardwalk. The woman you met at the book stand? We met. Why do you think it's her husband? Because it's the most working class death you've <laughs> ever seen. This is the most working class way to go, completely alienated and forgotten. The leather jacket points at the man's clothes. It matches her description perfectly. Bottles all around him point at the tar. She said he was drinking somewhere in Martinez. The library card, he was supposed to return a book. The leather jacket, it matches her description perfectly. The bright blue lining? Well, he's definitely someone's husband. What do you think happened here? Death by misadventure. He slipped and fell through the boardwalk. A truly unfortunate accident. If it wouldn't have been for that bench, he'd be alive. Could it be related to the lynching? Do you think he was drunk? Point at the bottle. What about the kebab? Someone should be held responsible for this broken boardwalk. It's dangerous. Could it be related to the lynching? No, I don't see anything that points mm -hmm. in that direction. For now, let's treat this case as a simple, albeit sad, accident, unrelated to the murder case. Agreed. If this somehow converges later, why not? But keep it simple for now. Do you think he was drunk? Point at the bottle. Oh, yes. What about alcohol poisoning and liver failure? Some symptoms of acute alcohol poisoning could have definitely played a role here. Severe confusion, respiratory depression, unpredictable behavior. But I think that death arrived through head trauma, not liver failure. What about the kebab? What about it? The deceased ate some kebab. It's probably from a nearby place, maybe in the parks. Sometimes a kebab is just a kebab. Someone should be held responsible for this broken boardwalk. It's dangerous. They'll seal this place off after the news reaches the coalition officials. I doubt that they have enough resources to actually repair the boardwalk. Not that sealing it off would keep anyone away. Mm. All it does is keep the city council's hands clean. Mm -hmm. He smiles sourly. Right. It does seem to be a pretty straightforward misadventure. Although there's still a question of identifying the body. What should we do with him? From where I stand, I can see two options. We either take the case and follow the leads to identify the body on our own, or we report back to the station and leave this for our colleagues to handle. We found him. We should finish this. Take the case. Let's leave this case for the station. I don't want to spend time on it. Don't take the case. I still need some time to decide how I want to solve this case. We found him. We should... Well, we, we spoke to her. We told her that we would take it, so... We should finish this. All right. We should first examine the library card you found. Then we can call the station from my kinema. Let okay. them know we are taking the case. The library card is folded into two and still slightly wet to the touch. The front side reads, Central General Public Library Card, issued to Billy Mejean, expires July 53. Billy is a unisex name. Could be the deceased or his family member. Look inside, look at the back, look inside. Whoever owns this card is an avid reader. You find a list of books written in blue pencil. Blue Radio blue. thriller. Stand a little less between me and the sun. The last one in the list is The Glinton Curve by M. Theobald. A library stamp indicates that the book has been returned. Most of these titles seem to be in the sci-fi genre. Some thrillers, too. Look at the back side. If lost, please return the card to the library. Dial 005-02-55211. Or visit us at Moreau Street, 78, Jamrock. Business hours, 900 to 1800. Good. We should give them a call from my kinema. Okay. See if we can learn anything about Billy Mejean. Put it away. Why can't I get this? Okay. Someone's made a campfire here a long time ago. A rusted broken control box for the radio relay tower. This ladder is too rusty to climb. The sea air has eaten away at it. Oh, yay. 
Yes. Hopefully it's a good one. And we can get rid of our tie. Minus two physical instrument. Oh my god. I don't want that. Tiny inlets there off in the far distance where the post trail fought toward. Alright, have we reached the dead end? Are we not able to go any further? This relay tower coordinates boat traffic in the bay, barely. So we need interfacing. Let's see if we can maybe make some of it up with our clothes. Interfacing. Mm. So it was 8% before. What is it now? Heavy wooden doors, more than twice your height, stand shut. Oh in no, front physical of you. instrument. The rectangular seat. Physical instrument, okay. Alright. Mm, okay. <laughs> ornamentation. Physical appears. instrument. Physical instrument two. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, is that our zoo? Oh, they're our zoologists or whatever. Zoo or whatever. Tiny cages carefully constructed. These soggy logs smell of igni ignition fluid. Still, they won't light up. Hey. Here we go. Nice and easy. Nice no and easy. No way out, little guys. <laughs> Not out of this gem. There's a cylinder on the ground in which the man is arranging some netting. It looks like some kind of trap. He notices you. Who's there? Oh, the police. Hello, officers. Is that the police? Why are the police here? Don't worry, Gary. Gary. I'll handle it. That is not an Australian accent, by the way. It's a New Zealand accent. You must be Morel, the cryptozoologist. To what do I owe the pleasure? That's sarcasm. He takes no pleasure from your appearance. Husband is Morel. Yeah, Morel, that's her husband. You don't seem too happy to see the RCM. Lena sent me. She's been really worried about you and is waiting for you to get back. You don't see happy to see the RCM. Oh no, it's all right. I'm just busy. Hey. What's this about? Lena sent me. Hey, of course. Thank you for passing along the message. That damn water lock is broken and we can't go all the way around the A81. Yeah, that was me. I broke the water lock with my motor carriage, but it's fixed now. You can go back. The water lock's been fixed. It was fine when I crossed it. We've held the whole story. Well, yeah, he doesn't need to know. Oh, good. We should really be getting back. Mm -hmm. Gary could use a hot shower and a warm bid. Bid. Did he say we can go back now? Yes. Yes, Gary. Yes, we can Gary. go soon. <laughs> if you see Lena, tell her I won't be long. Well, you you probably will get to her before I do, I'm assuming. Sir, your wife is waiting for you. Mm -hmm. I just have to do one more round. See if the phasmid has taken the bait. Oh then we go in. He refastens a bit of netting that has come loose in the wind. Tell me about this phasmid you're looking for. Tell me more about these traps. Lena seemed pretty, seems pretty eager for you to return. How did you become a crypt? Mm -hmm. Lena seems pretty eager. And I'm eager to return to her, I assure you. But I can't leave can't before we finish with these traps. My wife understands that just as well as anyone. He looks south where Lena would be. Come on, Morel. We've been soaking out here for days. It's time to go back. Just go. And leave the traps? Absolutely not. I won't let Lena down. Lena. Come on. She wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. We'll both catch reed crabs if we don't dry out soon. I didn't know the phasmid was so important to Lena. Come on, you're doing this for yourself, not her. I'm doing this for science, and so is she. I didn't know the phasmid was so important to Lena. Of Lena. course it's important to her. She's seen it. Seen A it. verified sighting, on record. One of only four this century, and it's hers. Really? She's sighted the phasmid? She didn't tell me that. Yes. That's yes. how we first came to know one another, in fact. But that's her story to tell. Believe not me. Not mine. She's <laughs> told me all about it. He coughs and continues. Needless to say, 
You must ask her about the mysterious phasmid. What do you mean? We've already talked to her about it. Suffice to say, it's long been our dream to find proof of the Insulindian phasmid together. I can't abandon course now. Another cough into his fist this time. Maybe you could go back to the whirling, warm up, come back to check the traps later. You should just give up on this bug hunt. Okay, I understand. I don't want to give up on things either. Maybe you could go back to the whirling. No, no, no. The traps need to be monitored on a regular schedule. What would we do if the phasmid were to starve while we were sipping tea at the hostel? He's dead set on this. Mm. Hmm. I could go for some trap setting. Uh, uh. How did you become a cryptozoologist? I've just always liked animals and puzzles. Animals. Searching for cryptids is a bit of both. He seems reluctant to talk about himself, but he'll open up if you prod a little. So you're living your childhood dream out here? Why not just be a zoologist? Real animals are puzzling too. Yep. Real. <laughs> I know you think one is a respectable profession, while the other is superstition. Everyone does. I don't. It's a profession, just like any other. Honestly, being a cryptozoologist trumps most of the garbage I've seen people do. Cryptozoology does seem like a lot of wishful thinking. My methods are the same as those of other scientists. I simply draw upon a wider variety of evidence, and I have more hope that something truly surprising might happen. And has anything truly surprising ever happened to you? No. As I <laughs> said, I have <laughs> yet to catch a cryptid. Although I have come close. Close enough to keep trying. What kinds of evidence do you use? Anecdotal evidence? Everything from forgotten regional law to newspaper accounts. Anecdotal. Like the one that brought us here. To look for the phasmid. I keep a very open mind too open he's interested in things that people believe that scientists don't you think other scientists don't listen to ordinary people enough most establishment scientists only care about reputation and remuneration not real research oh my God. and certainly not the truth they're a cowardly lot and both the field and basement archives can be dangerous places God, so annoying. So you have never discovered a cryptid? No. Very few cryptids are ever discovered, and not for a lack of trying. To stay hidden is a cryptid's primary quality. It's even in the name, cryptid. So how many cryptids have ever been found? Of the list of cryptids kept by the Cryptozoological Society of Shemni, which is 4,082 items long, about 2,000 have been confirmed as hoaxes. Two are categorised as confirmed discoveries. The rest are in differing stages of discovery, refutation and data collection. Only two have proven to be real? Yes, the Chateau Quan Forest Pygmy, who turned out to be an extinct species of primate, and a cave salamander from Hugo Grad, who is Honestly, quite unremarkable. It's in a zoo somewhere. We cryptozoologists are brutally honest with ourselves. More so even than the public. With cryptids, most cryptids are hoaxes or they are never found. That does not mean we should stop searching. Two out of 4,000 is not even 1%. I don't even know how, what, what to say. That's a small number. Two percent. Two out of 4,000 is not even 1%. In fact, it is 0.05%. <laughs> Ever more magnificent should our search contribute to making that number 0.075%. He has clearly done his math on this. There is no surprising him or swaying his opinion. So you're living your childhood dream out here? It's not child's play. Just because I have to trade through the mud every so often, his eyes narrow. <laughs> Thanks for explaining that. Now, about something else. Yes? Oh my god. What if we check the traps for you? 
I didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. Um, I don't. I just want to finish the quest. <laughs> Cryptozoology and detective work are very similar. Chaos is my method. I am in Sion. It's Sion. I'm all in with this cryptid shit. I'm hooked. Chaos is my method. I'm at Sion. Well, be that as it may, I'd really appreciate the help. Where are these traps? There are four in total. One is to the south, on this little peninsula. By the boathouse is there. He it's points very south. near. Okay. Another we set in Land's End, to the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune there. On your way to the old radio tower, after the church. The third is set near the canal, where you crossed, by a concrete slab. A big thicket of reeds going up the slope, and among them... He gestures to the trap in front of him. You should check at least one of those before returning to this one, since I just said it. This one's more of a technicality, but still, better safe and stupid than sorry. That seems like a lot. Do we really have time for this mm. extracurricular venture? What? I haven't found. Even relative to examining a weak old corpse, mm -hmm. I'm not sure mucking about in the reeds qualifies as mm. fun. But have it your way, detective. If you think it's important, you have been right before. What do I do if there's a phasmid in one of the traps? Bring it to me at once. Just make sure the trap is closed tight. He's not comfortable with the possibility that you'll claim the find, but he's lying about this even mm. to himself. What if I encounter the phasmid in the wild? That's highly unlikely, officer. But in the event you do, I'll spray you with a pheromone mixture I developed. It's made of musk and research chemicals. The pheromone should attract the insect to you, or at least prevent it from bolting at the side of you. It's quite potent. Will last you about a week. I don't want this. Thank you very much. Your choice. As I said, the chances of you encountering the phasmid are next to zero. But you, you feel you should have it on you. Something bad might happen. I'm ready. Let's get to it. Right. Which means you two can pack up and go back to the boiling. Whatever he thinks about this detour, it's clear that these men are exhausted. And in need of assistance. Mm. Finally, someone's talking sense. Thank you for your help. Gary and I will start breaking down camp. If you have any more questions, now's the time to ask. We'll be gone once you get to it. If it's more cryptid related business you want to discuss, you'll have time for that later too. No. But what if the information is vital? On the hunt. I'll get going. It's almost impossible to get a fire going this near to the ocean. Hello, I'm Gary. Very generous of you to help us out, officer. Yellow man. I mean, officer. <laughs> the lieutenant raises his eyebrows slightly and takes out his notebook. <laughs> Yellow man. Interesting. This is something to ask him about after a little probing first. I'm just waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect traps so we can return to civilization. Not a lover of the great outdoors. I like nature, just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. Degenerates? This man respects authority too much. To see the truth inscribed upon thine own visage. Pretend thou art the paragon of virtue. I am neither of those things, I can assure you. I'm a by the books, clean as a whistle officer of the law. I'm not even tempted to touch intoxicants. Degenerates? I've been trained to identify the slightest hint of degeneracy by the preeminent authority in it. Drunks and degenerates? That's my crew. Sadly, I think I might be a drunk or a degenerate, maybe even both. Nobody's perfect. I'm sure you've been tempted to drink. I'm neither of those things, I can assure you. I've been tempted on occasion, but someone has to stay strong for Revacol. Revacol? His gaze shifts to the pile of soggy logs at his he feet. He pronounces Revacol with a hard K, unlike other people. Serious question time. This man is no innocent. No one is. You said Revacol? 
I like to pronounce it the hard way. The old way. The Vespertine way. God. The stupid way? Yes. He winks at you, trying to relay some hidden message. Inviting you to mispronounce it too, perhaps. It's odd. It's a secret right. A very fringe nationalist handshake, probably. Do you know anything about the man hanged behind the whirling rugs? Oh, so that's what the RCM in Martinez is about. Great. Great to hear someone's finally taking care of that. He nods in sincere approval. So you do know something about it? No, no. Nothing. He was some kind of mercenary. But everyone here knows that. I'm just glad to hear you're looking into it. That's all. He didn't kill him or anything, but there's something going on here. Okay. Is this your mug? Hold up the yellow man mug. My mug? W why would you think that? You said yellow man. That's not something many people go around saying. It seemed as if you were calling it. Calling to it longingly when you cried yellow man. I can see you recognize it. It's in your eyes. You said yellow man. Really? I hear it all the time. All in jest, of course. No offense meant to anyone. Still seems suspicious. Did I mention the mug was found at the scene of a lynching? Okay, okay. I admit it. I threw the mug away in the trash container behind the hostel. I know I shouldn't have, and I am very sorry, officer. He pauses. You're not going to find me, are you? I am. Rip out a fine slip for 20 real. I am. Rip out a fine slip for 100 real. I am. Rip out a fine slip for 250 real, the maximum. Now, nah, Gary, I just want information. Oh, God. 250? How am I going to pay that? He okay. looks at... I'll work harder. I'll pay it off. I promise. This is a considerable expense to him. One month's wage, most likely. And I'll never do it again. I don't know what got into me, really. Work has been stressful lately. Damn Koiko's price dumping us out of competition. What did you do, Gary? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Just answering some <laughs> questions. Helping out the law. <clears throat> How did you get into the trash container? Gary, did you put the clothes of a murder victim, the man who was hanged behind the whirling and rags, into the trash container? How did you get into the trash container? I know a guy who works with the trash collection services, CS Municipal. He gave me a master key for the trash containers of Martinez. Why would you need to get into everyone's trash? So I can use the Whirling's trash compactor to store my own stuff. Garbage disposal is expensive as hell. The damn Chimians run it like a mob. I'm sorry, okay? I thought I could cut costs. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have disgraced myself. Disgraced? No need for the histrionic, sir. It was, after all, just a trash container. He studies his reaction. Gary doesn't answer. How did you get into the trash can? Gary, did you put the clothes of a murder victim? Officer, please. He Let me explain. Clothes. It's not like that. Do. I was only cleaning up. I live right across the yard from where he was hanged, and I saw him stripped naked. All the clothes lying around in the yard, smelling. People are animals, you know? Yes, yes, what happened? Okay, then what happened? Then I came out to clean up the rags, because no one else would. I put them into the Whirling's trash, along with a broken mug, admittedly. He changes his mind mid-sentence. Okay. I was coming to throw the mug away, and, yes. well, I threw the mug there and the clothes too. Okay, yeah, because I'm like, wait, what? The mug was yours. Right, it was just civic duty. The lieutenant remarks strolly. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. Civic duty. 
You wouldn't know anything about the victim's missing armor, would you? Armor? No. I, I mean, yes. Of course. I know he was wearing armor. But I don't know anything about it. An infant could see he's not telling the truth. Mm -hmm. But he's too scared to admit more wrongdoing. Oh my god, let's move on for now. I hope I can help your investigation. In my small way. Are you a cryptologist too? No, no. I help Morel with research sometimes, and I've learned some things along the way. But I don't usually go in for picnics like this on my own. After all this time with Morel, he must have an opinion on cryptids. This could lead to a good one. Fascinating. Let's talk about something else. Yes, officer? You were surprised to see my colleague, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. Not many Seolites here, or anywhere, other than Seol. I meant no offense, truly. Yeah, right. Do you remember how, when we met Measurehead and I said the next races will be a really good one? Mm, I think so. Sorry, as you know, I've been having problems. Yes. Well, this is that racist. Mm-hmm. He gestures towards Gary as though he were present, scenting a work of art. Are you Gary? Are you a racist? I don't know. I like the previous racist better. He's nothing compared to Measurehead. Are you Gary? Are you a racist? Hey, man. All I meant was there are not many Seolites around here. I'm just stating a fact. Do you have a problem with Seolites? The lieutenant is a native of Revishol. Yes, what are they doing in the Seol? The lieutenant is a native of Revishol. Do you have a problem with Seolites? No. No problem at all. He flashes an impenetrable smile at the lieutenant. Sounds like some conspiracy topic. You might be able to discuss it with him when the lieutenant isn't mm. here. If you can remember it. Oh, thank you for your cooperation. Composure. Okay. Oh, we can level up. Um. Should we put something in com Actually... Let's check our clothes first. Let's put all our composure stuff on. Plus... Wait, what happened? Yeah, plus composure. Mm, we only have one composure thing. Alright, let's see if that does anything. Always, I mean, officers. 28. Let's put a point in composure and see if that does anything. So it was 28. Always a pleasure. I mean... Officers. 42. All right. That yes. shirt looks very uncomfortable on him. Look at the buttons, barely keeping that thing together, as if something is ready to rip out from underneath. His massive musculature, something worn underneath it. Yes, like a piece of ceramic armor, for example. One that makes a clicking sound when the plates meet each other resembling pearls or marbles stolen mm -hmm. from the corpse in the yard near where wow. he lives well he's such a piece of shit i see you're a connoisseur of high quality combat gear i knew you'd figure it out officer i'm sorry i didn't tell you at once i was he unbuttons his shirt i was ashamed of what i did and i didn't want you to know you see gleaming white ceramic shine underneath. A thin layer of interlocking plates covers your gaunt, his gaunt torso. We're not detecting falsehood, sire. He's gearing up to admit the truth. This shame is surprisingly okay. sincere. All right. Gary, what's going on? <laughs> Gear. <laughs> Later, morale. I've got apologizing to do. <laughs> no, you've got explaining to mm -hmm. do. The lieutenant's tone is icy. You and me both, Kim. You and me both. Give me that armor now. Why did you really put those clothes in the trash? Why did you lie to me, Gary? Do you know... Sorry. Why did you lie to me, Gary? <laughs> Do you know who killed the hanged man? Why did you lie to me, Gary? Because I was weak. Ah, uh, weak. I should uh, have told you the moment I saw you. Oh, the coward. The hell, Gary? <laughs> you in trouble? <laughs> I'll explain later. He doesn't muster up his strength to yell. Why did you really put those clothes in the trash? Everyone was picking those pieces off him, and I was watching them do it. 
and they'd scattered his clothes all over the yard. Everything was smelling. He looks at his feet. So I went there to take out the trash and started cleaning up. All those rags on the ground, him swinging up there, and I had a lapse of honor, sir. I thought, he's a foreigner. They all say he wasn't from here. Only the caress was left, so I stripped it off him. It was early in the morning. No one saw me. I took it with me. It was a mistake. Had I known it'd give you guys trouble, I... I wouldn't have... Fuck. God, you're so dumb. I have no patience for dumb people, and these two are so dumb. It's a murder case. It's a murder scene. Like, you didn't think that... Oh, my God. So stupid. We're detecting sincere contrition here, sire. He's not trying to flatter anyone. It's okay. It was a loose end, and you are tiny tap now. I'm so fucking sorry I called you Yellow Man. Sealite officers commanded the Suzerain's navy. Most of them sided with the king when... He shakes his head. They were thoroughly conservative men, he realizes suddenly. It's difficult to say what the lieutenant thinks of this historic apology. Mm. His face does not belie emotions. Do you know who killed the hanged man? I always thought it was the Union. Some Union hard asses lynched him because of the strike. But almost everyone in town knows that. I wish I could tell you more. He shakes his head. This is all he knows. Give me that armor now. He sighs again, hangs his head, and unbuttons his shirt fully. A cuirass that matches the dead man's boots comes into view. Soon it is in your hands, smelling of his sweat. Ew. But so, so light to hold, like a bag of cotton. Are we done here, Gary? Yes, absolutely. I will never do anything like this again. Thank you for your cooperation, bitch. Yes. Whoa. Pain threshold. Oh, minus empathy. Oh, well. I wonder if we can knock someone out now. Inspect the traps. These heavy military blockades are riddled with bullet holes crumbling. I'm so glad we did that. I'm so glad. That was really cool. I did not expect that at all. I'm so happy. Ooh. That patch of reeds over there, it's a great place to hide something. Kind of out of the way, being so close to the water. Wait, I can't see anything interesting. You don't have a reason to. Yet. What is this about? Nothing. Just a hunch. Okay. The hunch passes, leaving you there, by the old boy bobbing in the water. Time to go. Can I grab this, please? No. That, yes. A boy... Boy bobs in the water, the number on it says 11. Okay. Why can't I get this thing? Uh, a school of fish huddle around the fence post and scatter into the dark. Ooh. Before you, a drawbridge, it can only be lowered from the other side. Oh, let's see if she can wash that crusty jacket. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? I found this jacket, but it's filthy. Could you wash it for me? I can wash it for you. But it's going to take about a half an hour. Think you can stay put for that long? Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. I could use a breather. It's been another track and field day. Mm-hmm. The lieutenant says, rubbing his thigh. Yeah. yeah, I'll wait. Well, hand it over then, and I'll see what I can do. Merci. I'm proud of this one. It's pretty nice underneath all that filth. I hope you'll have an easier life in your hands. Mm hmm Goodbye, I'm off. Thank you. Hopefully it's good. Oh. Pain threshold. Oh, fuck. Minus drama. <laughs> Shit. All right. Um, this is better. Oh, well. Would it help us open the church door, maybe? 
was it pain threshold that we needed or was it something I can't remember we'll have a look we must have taken a lot of patience to do this hey a shaggy looking girl in her late teens or early 20s kneels on the ice with an electronic contraption in her hand hearing you approach she looks up oh hello there it's cold out here but she's not wearing a hat she must be freezing dear child it's freezing where's your hat huh she looks up at you distracted i said you should have a hat on so should you i do i do have a hat on I don't have to do anything. I'm the law. You have to do what the law says. I should and I do. I should and I do. Point to your hat. Oh, I didn't notice that. It's nice. You should wear one too if you plan on staying outside in this weather. Now that that's all cleared up, I have some questions for you. You should wear a hat. Yeah, well, look man, fuck the hat. What did she just say? That's not how a civilian is supposed to address oh an officer of the law. Oh my god. Regain authority in her eyes. Alright, let's do it. Let's... <laughs> Your eyes are fixed on her as everything gets very still. Dangerously so. Oh my god. Excuse me? What did you just say? She looks down, pretending to be busy with the device. Make her meet your eyes. Oh my god, this is a little abusive. The kid isn't arrogant. She's just afraid to look you in the eye. You already okay. put her in her place. Kick some snow into her face with your boot. You did not just speak to... Oh my god. I am the police. You would do well to avoid this kind of language with me. Oh my god. You're right. I shouldn't have sworn. I'm sorry. She looks up like a scold scolded schoolgirl. Her years concealed beneath thick makeup. Now I have some questions for you. Good, then take my work. Good, then my work here is done. Now I have some questions for you. Okay. She gathers herself for a moment. What is your name? Asel. And your surname? Asel who? I'm not a young suitor. This is official. Oh my God. And your surname? Why? Why indeed. Forget it. Okay. <laughs> What's that device you have there? This. It's a portable recording device. It's for field recording. Low quality, but still. And the wires? Actually, just one wire. I picked on it till the braiding came loose. The wire leads to a contact microphone. What's a contact microphone? A contact mic records sounds from inside things, like this ice. Your mangled brain would like you to know there is a boxer called Contact Mike. Yeah, any news on my wife's name? How about my mother? What am I supposed to do with this? No idea. Does this have anything to do with contact mic? How does that thing work? Where did you get the mic from? Same place I got the recorder from. The Palisium. What's the Palisium? Probably a hangout for junior delinquents. Back to the mic. If What's the Palisium? Oh man. You haven't been to the Palisium? It's the coolest place in this whole drug-addled shithole. She forgets herself for a moment. It's a music club and a synthesizer workshop on Boogie Street in Jamrock. Boogie. Musicians live there, like real musicians. I once saw Arno Van Eyck. Thinking about it really cheers her up. It's a long way from here, though. Sounds interesting. Who is this Arno guy? Sounds like a place for congregating homosexuals. <laughs> Who is this Arno guy? Oh, yeah. Guess you wouldn't know Van Eyck. Or really be a Palisium going kind of person. She looks you over, assessing your age. I get down. On second thought, it's go. Let's go back to the con. I get down. I don't know what that means. I grind. I don't know what that means either. It means I'm hip beyond my years. Nor do I, but I have concrete evidence that I rock in the form of a wrecked tape player and a completely trashed hostel room. Neither do I, actually. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Get down, grind. It means I'm hit beyond my years. That's cool. She breathes on her fingers. Looks like she doesn't know what to say. You're right. Time has deserted me. Never mind. Let's talk about that contact mic instead. Sure. How does that thing work? The mic? 
I don't exactly know. Somehow it doesn't pick up vibrations from the air. The book said it only picks up structure born sound, if you like techno babble. Does this have anything to do with contact mic? Uh, yeah, I record stuff with it. No, I mean the boxer contact mic. Ah, uh, no. This is a contact microphone. It's for recording inside solid objects. Contact mic just beats people up. You know, contact mic doesn't just boot people up. Contact mic is a role model. Oh my god, okay. Um... <laughs> An entire litany spews forth. Yes, you heard right. You should try to be more like Contact Mark, a successful athlete and an inspirational figure who has overcome social, physical and mental obstacles. On second thought, screw Contact Mark. He's not a champion. You are. Look at you here in front of a saggy tent, picking your nose to drug addict music. The world of sports is in awe of your faith and dedication. Oh my god. Sorry, I don't know why I said that. There was something else I wanted to know. Yes? Actually, I have some non-mark questions for you. Okay. What are you doing out here in the cold? Recording, I guess. What is... and what is it you're recording exactly? I think I'm recording cracks in the ice. But there's no way to tell. Not without headphones. I think I just recorded your footsteps too. Not sure how that will sound. She scratches her he forehead. Wait, what happened to the headphones? And what are those recordings for? The packs, the footsteps? The musicians in the Palisseum used them for making music. They looped the stuff, cutting the tapes together. They make music out of cracks in the ice and keys jangling. Crazy sounds like that. It's hard to explain. Just nod. Anyway, I thought I'd make some too. It's supposed to be, like, a music place anyway. She rubs her shoulders and looks around. I don't really know what I'm doing. They use synthesizers too. I don't have a synthesizer. She yeah. looks at the recording device. The thing she thought would fill her hours with joy and escape. It's turning out to be an empty fantasy. She feels childish. Very useless all of a sudden. Take this, your call. The lieutenant begins to take off his jacket. No man, fuck that, I'm caught. Cool. I'm sorry I said that. I'm sorry about the fuck. It's okay. The lieutenant backs up. He throws you a glance. Now this is where a hat would come in handy. <laughs> Give her your hat. Here, you need... No. You said it's supposed to be a music place. What is? Um. Now this is where a hat would come in handy. Yeah, maybe you were right about the hat. Mm-hmm. You said it's supposed to be a music place. What is? That. The boys think it could be a place, like the Palisseum or something. Stupid. It's really not going to be a Palisseum, that's for sure. The boys? Yeah. Andre and the guys, they're inside, in the tent. Okay. And why is that? Why are you freezing out here while the boys are inside? They got too much stuff crammed in there. No room. Stuff like what? Music stuff, mostly. Like this tape recorder, but bigger. Why not just... And there's piles of it. Why not just leave some of it outside so you don't have to freeze? That stuff is more expensive than I am. More expensive than any of us, really. Doesn't matter. I can take the cold. I had some other questions. Go ahead. No. What the fuck? Why is my empath empathy for? Tell me more about this music... Tell me more about this music place you've been planning in the church. It's supposed to become, like, a club for anodic dance music, like that new style of synthesizer stuff they play at the Palisseum. Except that, yeah. She looks at the old wooden church up on the poles as a mean wind comes bellowing in. The six-story structure lets out a doleful shriek. The floorboards are twisting, and the shooting beams are slowly cracking, like bones. Far east of the Golden Delta, beyond the industrial port, there is a black patch of unlit coast with the smallest creatures on the ice. There will never be a club for anodic music here. Not in a million years. What is anodic dance music? You know, anodic, cathodic, music that's made with electronic instruments. Electronic instruments? Like what? Synthesizers and tape consoles. Microcomputers too. Anything that uses electricity, but isn't guitars. 
Also found sounds, stuff like that. You see clear, beautiful, violent flashes of light. Light cutting through a smoke-filled darkness. That is what the future will look like, if it ever comes. This is an evolutionary step up from amplified instruments, which in turn are a step up from acoustic instruments. What comes after it, you wonder? A black-tinted nothingness or something finer? Anodic music? Now I'm going to find out what it is. What is it? So you oh, I already did that. So you want to turn the church into a club? Did you put the padlock on the church door? Enough about the church. So you want to turn the church into a club? I know. It's not my idea. Andre and the boys found the place. It was supposed to be deserted, but now they can't even take it. Hey, don't get me wrong, but you're cops, right? Yes, why do you ask? Okay, well... Maybe you could talk to Andre and the guys. Because there are some strange things going on in that church. If you're police, you should look into it, right? I'll, s I'll talk to them. We'll see. I prefer to remain non-committal. I've got enough. I'll talk to them. They're inside that thing there. Would be cool if you did. Was there something else? Did you put the padlock on the church door? No. No? Not really, no. So they did. She's trying to get out of a direct lie with semantic tricks. She personally didn't put the yeah. padlock on the door. Okay, so if you personally didn't, then who did? Show her the sticker on your ledger so this isn't yours. So if you personally didn't, then who did? Yeah, you know, that's what I meant. Noid did. Noid put the padlock on the door. Wait, is this Noid a friend of yours? To keep more weirdos from getting in. Fucking Martinez. I'm sorry. Oh. It's got the worst weirdos. If you get around to it, ask Andre about them. He'll tell you. I got confused. I had a brain fart. I picked the wrong thing. Um, and not even, okay, enough about the church then. I had another question. Go ahead. Fuck. Actually, that's it for now. Okay, bye. Alright, um, let's see if we can put some empathetic clothes on. <laughs> Maybe we can take some unempathetic clothes off. Uh, empathy minus one, take that off. Alright, what about now? What's our empathy now? <laughs> Hello again. No. We need we need it to be higher. Painted with pastels, someone is trying to bring cheer in the world. It's such bullshit that she's out there and they're in the town. More tribalistic markings, his post is covered in little humanoids. A pole screwed into the ice keeps the tent erect. Trash from some unending party. Ooh. A pane of etonite has been planted into the snow. Two poles are holding it up. Barely holding it up. It could fall over any minute. A stronger gust of wind might be enough. What is this? It looks like a makeshift bridge. Could be convenient. Mm-hmm. Push the antenna nut over. The pain falls into the icy snow with a soft <laughs> thunk. Cool. This is someone's home away from home, just like yours. Alright. The tent is just tarpaulin fabric covering a pile of stuff. The flap is open. Inside, three young men, all in forward-looking apparel, reminiscent of the sticker on the padlock, are mm. listening to some new form of music. It's like nothing you've ever heard. One of them looks at you. Come on, get in and close the flap behind you. The warm stuff's getting out. It's safe to assume this is their leader, or at least he thinks he is. Squeeze in. Sorry, you barely have room for one. You go ahead. I'm too old for this. I'm actually not, he thinks. I just dislike delinquents. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you will feel right at home. <laughs> I'll keep watch. 
he gestures for you to squeeze in. So there is enough room for one person. One more person. Wow. Canisters filled with what appears to be water. The label says distilled. A speaker, a big kind they use for live music. You see a youngish man bleaching the tips of his hair with a toothbrush. He puts the toothbrush down and extends his hand in greeting. Hello, I'm Andre. It's a pleasure to meet you. There is definitely something futuristic about his hair. Aggressively so. You get the sense that this is what the future will look like. Music's cool. Imbecilic. Yes, should the future ever come, it will look deeply imbecilic, like this guy. Shake his hand. His grip is strong, sweaty and warm. He's trying to project and inspire confidence. Mm. This is my posse, Noid. The young man with earrings looks at you suspiciously. Uh, an egghead. Egg! The tape player high above his head continues to blast what is probably anodic music. Together with a little burger, who's out there right now, doing some seriously progressive sonic experimentation, we like to think of ourselves as music venue organisers. Wait, how many music venues have you organised? We have many in the pipeline, officer. That means they mm -hmm. haven't set up a single one yet. Yeah, why are you here? You see, we've been all over Jamrock North, prospecting for real estate to establish a new venue in. Artists are for talent. Yeah, thank you, Egghead. And while there is no shortage of raw, unfettered talent spinning tapes in Jamrock, we've had rotten luck with the real estate part. Place is a shithole. I, I apologise for my friend Noit's potty mouth. I realise this is not how you speak to a police officer. I he has authority issues. There's no need, the place is pretty bad. Next time, watch yourself. Was there something you wanted? Your friend, Ax so, I can't remember how to say her name, said there was a problem with the church. Oh, so you've met her? Good, good. He nods. Yeah, it's a matter of occupied ecclesiastical property. I bet you've noticed the derelict hive of Narcomania on the coast. An attempt to pander to your perceived conservative sensibilities. No person his age would ever use a word like narcomania with a straight face. Don't fall for it. Enough histri histrionics. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the church. And I'm not exaggerating. Even a place of spiritual refuge can become a magnet for all sorts of dopeheads and burnouts if left unattended. A church is a nightclub. It's, I think it's, it's kind of a cool idea, you know? Dopeheads! Burnouts! He angrily spits on a screw, then starts cleaning it. Well, I'm sad to say, that's exactly what happened. Sad because we were just about to put Martin A's on the map with one of the maddest dance clubs in Jamrock. Nah, strike that, in Revershol. Strike that, the world! And sadder yet, because the dopeheads and burnouts hold up in there with the worst kind. He leans back a little, watching you with a steady, serious gaze, letting you imagine just how bad those dopeheads and burnouts really are. Good. This calls for an opinion. You're an expert in those. I won't stand for narcomaniacs of any kind. No narcomaniacs on my watch. Shake your head gravely. I feel like you may be laying this on a bit thick. What's really so bad about these dope heads and burnouts? They're spooky. What exactly do you mean by spooky? Spookiness is not a matter of police investigation. What do you exactly do you mean by spooky? I was hoping you would be the judge of that, officer. All I can say is, their spookiness is the kind that keeps us from restoring this church into a community centre and a place of spiritual refuge. Also, they don't eat or clean the building. Shit's gonna collapse. People just wanna spin tapes without them spooking it up. Place has bad signs. No one can dance like that. Thank you, Egghead. So you're gonna look into it, right? It should be a police matter. Getting them out. Whatever spooky stuff they're doing, I'm sure it's not what the Ecclesiastes meant their property for. I'll look into it. Tell me more. I'll make up my mind later. I have questions for you first. The police have more important things to do right now. I have more questions. All right, man. He claps his hands enthusiastically. 
Asel told me Noid put the padlock on the door, why? I did ask Noid to install a measure against more drifters wandering in. It's a temporary fix, just something to contain the situation. I had to do it in an hurry. Not my best work, but it should hold for a while. I need the key. Of course! Noid, give the officer the key. Only if he promises to look into the spooks sure. in the church. He looks at you gravely. Officer, I apologise. Noid doesn't always understand the joy of giving for the sake of giving. I think it may have something to do with his childhood. Damn it. Take it. Don't you just want to see what's in there? Okay, just give me the key. You can't coerce, coerce me into taking this on. I don't need the key. Okay, just give me the key. Brilliant! Noid, the key! The air in the tent feels lighter. Noid, the key. Alright. Oh my god. Reaction speed, medium. Be the cool cop. Catch the key as it flies towards you. Oh my god. Let it fall to the ground, then pick it up like a normal adult. Per oh. Are we gonna learn loot? We're gonna lose some more. <laughs> you sense the trajectory oh, okay. of the little piece of metal and plastic. The object makes a small ringing sound as it approaches. Just the tiniest chime to your left. Catch it. Kaching. The key hits your palm. The speed freaks nod to you approvingly. Bask in the glory. Thanks, man. Play it cool. Thanks, man. The speed freak nods to you. A respectful nod. You proved something here. <laughs> How long have those people been locked in there? Not long. Like a week, maybe? How can you be sure they haven't starved to death? This is cool, taking initiative like this. Yeah, starved to death. I'm super sure they're alive. I mean, come on. I'm at least 90%, maybe 85% sure they're still alive. Somewhere in the ruinous past that led you here. There was something called exams. You may have learned the term involuntary manslaughter. Yeah. See, I just assumed, right? Oh, okay. There must have, like, the people that are, like, uh, taking up residency or whatever in the area, they must have been away. And then the guy, Noid or whatever his name is, quickly locked it so they to prevent them from coming back. I didn't think they actually locked them in. And that, why would you, because they just so casually admitted or owned up to, to that? Andre, do you know what involuntary manslaughter means? 85% is not good enough when you're dealing with another person's physical well-being. 85% is good enough. No one lives forever, baby. Andre, do you know what involuntary, involuntary manslaughter means? Yes, I do. I listen to Channel 8 all the time. I know about crime stuff, and I assure you, officer, this is not what's happening here. I'm at least 80% sure they're alive. I mean, come on. Most people aren't ever that alive in their entire lives. What does that even mean? Yeah, I catch a drift. Sounds like nonsense. What does that even mean? I don't know. What does anything mean, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. He looks at his friend with an expression of profound understanding. Sounds like nonsense. You're right. It is nonsense. Total garbage. I knew you'd see through it. You're one smart cop. It feels good to be the smart cop, doesn't it? That's a good cop to be. Has a nice ring to it. Smart cop. You wouldn't want to be stupid cop now, would you? But still, yes. maybe he's just sucking up to you. Of course he is. Of course he is. You can stop buttering me up now, thank you. I get it. Now, where was a uh, You can stop buttering me up now, thank you. Oh, okay. I won't do that anymore. How long have those people been locked in? We've already done that. Right, other questions. Sure, man. Tell us what you want to know. Let's do it. Who exactly are these people inside the church? Truth is, I don't really know. None of us do. I don't even know how many there are. All we've seen are glimpses. You haven't even seen them and you want the police involved? Better safe than sorry. Anything more you can tell me? You haven't even seen them? Well, there's also the machinery. This machinery is of the deeply mystical variety. When I first scouted the place back in February, it was abandoned, empty. Took some time getting the crew together. So about two weeks ago, we came here hoping to set the stuff up. Suddenly, there are all these strange machines lying around in there. 
one of them has wires running into bowls of water. Wires into water. Never seen anything like it. Andre, tell him about the feeling. Oh, and it felt like there was something in there with us, watching us from the dark. No, the other one. Um, which other one? I'm not as in tune with my emotions as you are, Egg. <laughs> felt like silence. Awful silence. But you haven't physically seen anyone? Not exactly. We've just seen someone who we think is a woman go in and out of the church a couple of times. And we felt someone or something eyeing us inside. But that's kind of it. What was th that about something watching you? Could you tell me more about this machine? What was that about something watching you? Like you aren't alone, you know? It wasn't quite human, if you know what I mean. Not human? As in a ghost? <laughs> Do you know what he means? It was this dark shape climbing upside down along the ceiling, like some kind of crab man. A crab man? Yeah, you know, the way it was climbing up and around the ceiling, like a crab. It was stalking a cell, exhibiting ambush behaviour. Odd, crabs are usually marine creatures and not known for climbing walls. Are you sure there was a crab man ambush behaviour? Crab man. Are you sure there was a crab man? Yeah, totally. I mean, I didn't personally see it. A cell was alone that time. But I believe her. If she comes out running and says there's a crab in there, there's a crab in there. You should ask her about it, but be nice. Don't tell her you don't believe in a crab. There probably is no crab man. Don't let them draw you in with this nonsense. Can you tell me more about this machinery? You should talk to Noid about that. I just got a distinct burnout and dopehead sign from them. Probably jacked up to some snuff station too. Probably very likely. So how can you be sure they're burnouts and dopeheads if you haven't even seen them? Well, honestly, I can't, but I am. This is a below feeble attempt at avoidance. Mm. Basically, he is attempting to weaponize idiocy. Mm. Wow, you can't, but you do. I should add weaponized idios idiocy to my own repertoire. I don't see a single thing wrong with that argument. Wow, you can't. Hey now, I'm 70% sure they're substance abusers. Don't let all that technology fool you. Where do you think the drugs come from? Alright, let's talk about something else. Sure. What? You mentioned some kind of exceliastus on the church. Who are these Exclesiastes? Oh yeah, that's a meteor and name for the founding party. Thought it'd be cool to use it. If you don't know what the founding party is, there might be a way to mask it with minor demagoguery. Before we go on, what do you mean by Meteor Meteorian? Oh, the founding party, I do know them. But can you refresh my memory? Mask it. Now humor me, Andre. What is the founding party? Come to think of it, I've never really looked them up, you know. I can't give you a precise definition, but they're a very powerful religious organisation. And? And they have roots in ancient mass society. And they're the custodians of the Periconassian church. Plus, they anoint the innocents. They, like, made the innocentic system, no? Now, Andre, in your opinion, would this ancient religious organization who anoints the innocents want a club for anodic music, anodic music in one of their churches? They sound like exactly the kind of, of, the kind of who would want, yeah. Now, Andre, in your opinion. Totally. There isn't a trace of doubt in his voice. Oh my God. The Periconassian church is about love. Anodic music is about love. I got love for my Periconassian posse. Love is the relay out of death. We dance. <laughs> he violently shakes the tape player as if to see if he can break it. Love is hardcore. <laughs> Unity. 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 Make some noise for my Insulindian posse. He turns the volume up, then looks at you with a knowing nod, as if it's obvious you will now break into dance. I don't quite understand what you're talking about. What's a posse? I guess love can be pretty hardcore. I now understand it was lame of me to suggest otherwise. Anodic music is about love, and so is the Parakinesian church. 
No, this is too much. No sane organization would want this level of absurdity in their church. Well... Um, I guess love can be pretty hardcore. Oh yeah, it can! He's coming around! You're he, getting it! He nods to his friend, then turns to you with a mischievous grin. Is this been... Uh, is this been sarcastic? Uh... I don't quite understand what you're talking about. What's a posse? Your posse's like your people, man! Like you got your cup posse! You look out for each other, and you party together! That's a posse! And where is your posse, detective? Nothing comes to you. The world is silent. It just- it sounds like you're just saying random things. Love, posse, make noise. I, I want to say this, but I, I don't know if it's sarcastic or not. Like, if it's serious, I don't want to say it. I'm just going to say no, this is too much. That's pretty downbeat. I think I speak for all of us when I say we expected the law to be more open to the idea of love, unity, and the Periconassian posse. I'm sorry, the law doesn't share your vision. Well, we're sorry too. So, you got more questions? The one with the large head is still looking at you, nodding his head, waiting for your body to start moving. His expectation is fierce. I wanted to ask you about this tent full of equipment. Yes. What? I see you bought your own water. Yeah, yeah. Good to have. Bitch to carry. When I first scattered the place, I did some reconnaissance. I'm not sure the church even has running water. And it's distilled, too. Uh, oh. He doesn't know what to say. It's the one they sell at the fuel station. It's like he's lying to you, my liege. But he's slippery enough that there's nothing for you to grab hold of. All right, enough of this. He nods enthusiastically, no doubt a little relieved. Fuck. Shit. Maybe everything is required as he's been told. Take a moment to end up. Shit, that's it for now. As always, we'll be right here, waiting patiently for the news. Yeah. So you had a talk with Andre, and now you want to discuss things with Noid. Good. Skin shows through the holes in the speed freak's too large sweater. In front of him, an open toolbox full of carpentry tools and parts. It's good you talked to Andre first. Gave me time to get a reading on your sign. Can't really talk to people before you get a reading. He runs his hand through his hair, which is combed back in mock seriousness, and continues to fiddle with some gears. Sign? Yeah, gotta compare. See if we can align. Interesting. I suck at socialising, man. Even now, our sign synchronisation is way off. But I'll see what I can do. He continues to rearrange his tools. I saw a sticker on the padlock. Can you tell me anything about it? A sticker? You mean the yellow one? Can you describe it to me? Interesting. He wants mm. you to describe it. Yeah. Though he already knows what it looks like. Why describe it if you already know what I mean? I mean this one. Show the sticker on your ledger. Okay, it's a yellow... Yeah, why describe it if you already know... So I can hear you do it. Sometimes the outside gaze helps us reflect on things. Oh my god. <laughs> Noid, don't bother our guests with your games. Mm. Piss off, Andre. Me and Mr. Cop are trying to discuss art. You shouldn't talk like that. Yeah, you should be more respectful. I don't mind a little foul language here and there. Cool. The ban on foulness. That's the moralist plot to alienate us from our bodily functions so they can control us more fully. Anyhow, what was the sticker like? Produce your ledger and show him the sticker. Oh, wow. Right on your cop ledger. You like it? Yeah, it's cool. It's super stupid. That's what it is. I think I remind. I think it reminded me of myself. It's very modern. I'd like to learn more about it. Yeah, it's cool. It is cool, but it's also more than that. Much more. Noid is a bit disappointed. It's just cool. What's it supposed to be? What makes a sticker so modern? I think you've, we've exhausted the subject for now. 
what's it supposed to be? The dead guy smiling. And what does it mean? Why is the dead guy smiling? He defeated history. We are living in the age of history, and in the eyes of history, we are always already dead. How can we ever smile then? Because history is a lie, and so are its deaths. The present moment and life are the hardcore. The hardcore expels death. Or maybe he's not dead. Maybe he's just really ecstatic about the beats. What makes it so what makes the sticker so modern? Simplicity was brought to us by classical solarist modernism, but that was a tasteful, harmonious simplicity, right? Well, hardcore is not tasteful or outwardly harmonious. It's a warning shot. This will be dangerous. The echo of man's loss haunting him. The sticker, the clothes, the music, same thing. You come up with this stuff by yourself, seems awesome, not in agreement. My head is spinning, it's hard to keep up with the times you come up with this stuff by yourself. Not alone. Many people are thinking the same thing right now. There's a gathering at the Palisium. The beat is the same for all. I think we've exhausted the subject for now. Well, I guess one could write an entire treatise on the thing. But what for? What about now? Are the signs all right now? Nah. Hmm. Still strongly out of sync. Stage gamma disalignment. What? You heard me. He examines a small metal bolt in his hand. Tell me about the machines you saw in the church. Weird stuff. Specialised. There was a data processor and some sort of long wave machinery. Wires going into water. Gives off a spy sign. Or some fucked up Samaran science sign. You know, the kind that goes head first into the supernatural. Hmm. The People's Republic of Samara is a product of Revachal's sister revolution on the Grad Isola. It's known as a severely degenerated rogue state. What's wrong with the supernatural? The supernatural? Supernatural? So you think it's real? That it actually exists? What's wrong with the supernatural? Nothing's wrong with it. You should definitely be researched. You can still do sick shit with it though. The sickest? That's perhaps why it should be researched. The supernatural, so you think it's real? That it actually exists? Most of it doesn't exist. But there's also stuff that isn't allowed to exist. Because the moralists think it's too dangerous for the plebs. Sonic powers, pale related diseases, pretenders pretending to be human, folk rights, that kind of stuff. Why are you called Noid? The hardcore aesthetic is esoteric. It's not meant to be discussed with the law at this moment. He picks up some sort of widget. It's not easy to reach a harmonic resonance of signs without some adjustment. Does this mean we need sign matching? I don't understand what that means. Does this mean we need sign matching? Yes. Further sign matching would do good for us. One way to achieve this would be by getting us into the church. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll come back later. A young man with peroxide blonde hair holds up a Harmon Walshi tape player, nodding along to the music. He looks at you with a knowing smile and says, as though you're supposed to be sharing some tremendous evangelical secrets. Hardcore! <laughs> Is it? It's hardcore! You're just going to keep saying it's hardcore, aren't you? I don't know what to say. You're just going to keep saying it's hardcore, aren't you? Skibba dee, skibba danger. I am the rearranger. Your cop training did not prepare you for this. <laughs> what to do? Could there have been a right way out of this garden of forking paths, you think? Alright, um... Logic. Past logic to logic. I have nothing that takes logic. What colour is logic? Logic is blue. What if I put some conceptualization? What if I put some blue stuff on, you know? Um, so my jacket, maybe I'll put that on. Or oh, rhetoric. 
visual calculus plus one logic. Let's see if this does anything. Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? This is a white check. We could try. Maybe everything isn't quite as as. Let's talk to. As always, we'll be right here. Let's talk to him first. All right, we can. The young oh. man with. This is hardcore. So nothing. Hardcore. Still so hardcore nothing. Hardcore to the mega. All right. Here comes the night. All right. Back to the heavy hardcore. So nothing. Hardcore. Still so hardcore nothing. Hardcore to the mega. So nothing. Internally coherent. I was wondering if you knew who killed the mercenary hanging around the wood. Still so nothing. All car. All right. Yeah. So nothing. He furrows his brow as his very large head traces the sublime invisible movement of the music in the very real air of the stuffy tent. Hardcore! Ah! So hardcore. Is it though? He stops dead in his tracks, tilting his head to the side. It is. What is it? I mean, really. He tilts his head to the other side like an owl. Feels like you should reply with the very pinnacle of idiocy here, so that things get totally transcendent. Mm. But you haven't gotten there yet, so you don't know what to say. I was thinking that too. I am the Mike Enforcer. I am the chick's ch- Oh my god. We're close. So it's a young man with- True! Okay. Hard! Full! Car! So hard nothing. Hard car! Hard car to so internally nothing. coherent. So All nothing. Car. All right. yeah. He so furrows nothing. his brow. Hard car. Is it though? It is. What is it? I Feels like you should reply with a very. I don't know what to say. Under the radar. Oh. Okay. Um. Hi again. So uh. How let's do going? this. A number of things don't add up. Let's take a look. Awesome. How about gather around, kids? Okay, kids, now gather around. The young speed freak puts down a busted capacitor and looks at you. The one with the large head seems very enthusiastic about whatever you have planned. Their would-be leader is less amused. Sometime in the past, I'm not sure when and where, but betrayal was involved. I fell sick and became the shadow you see now. But before that, I have reason to believe I was a police detective. I got bad news for you, Andre. Things don't add up. I'm going to say the first one. But you still are. Thank you for your kind words. But everyone in here sees I'm a disgrace to the uniform. I was good enough in this job to be awarded the rank of lieutenant. In your f oh, I can't remember how to say it. I could have been captain. Imagine that. What happened? Egghead looks serious. Suddenly, disco happened. It smelled so impossibly sweet. Life tore me a new asshole. I did. I happened to myself. Disco happened. I've been trying to say we need the next step in dance music to happen fast. Shut it. He looks at his friend. What? I have. I've said that. Now, obviously, that might as well have been a thousand years ago, but there's still some detective left in me. The young speed freak is silent. He senses something is wrong. This isn't the markings of a club. It's a tent full of laboratory equipment for manufacturing drugs. I have no idea how you arrived at that conclusion, but it's wrong. Look, we even have speakers. He points at the speaker. One speaker. They have one speaker. Where is your friend? Did he lose his friend? The distilled water, cornerstone of a clean lab. And of all cellular based life, what's your point, Lawbringer? Where is his friend? Did he lose his friend? What do you mean, friend? The other speaker, you only have, you have only one. It's a one speaker system. It's monodynamic. You wouldn't know the first thing about sound reproduction in anodic music. Other speaker. <laughs> This may be the brain damage talking, but you've definitely never heard of monodynamic or one speaker systems. There is no need for me to pile on any more, is there? No shit. 
it sounds tired. In short, you try you try to use a police detective to set up a drug lab. That's come on, that's preposterous. Against the law, punishable by summary incident against the law. I meant to say not true. In short, you try to use a police detective. Oh. <laughs> so what are we gonna do with you? What do you mean do? There's resignation in his voice. He's almost ready to drop the act. It wouldn't take a lot of pushing. Mm. The optimal way to go about this would be indifference. It begins by you telling him you don't care about any of this. We do this lawman style. First you tell me everything and then I pass judgement. You tell me what's really going on and we'll work from there. I can be lenient. I don't really care. I just wanted to crack the case. Do what you want and I'll do what I want. Really? He sounds relieved. Of course not, really. I'm a cop. Now tell me what's going on immediately. Really, really. I wanted to ask you about something else. You wanted to just ask me about something else? He's a bit perplexed now. Shrug. Or you can tell me the plan for the church. Re or you can tell me the, pl the plan for the church really was. Yes, I did. I'm that kind of person. Now tell me. Move on to other questions. Or you can just tell me the plan for the church really was. He thinks for a moment, then opens his mouth, but closes it again, then finally raises his hands. Things are just way too hard for an entrepreneur in this city. It's not like we're not going to turn the church into the wickedest club in East Weathershaw. Because we are! We totally are! We just got to turn it into a speed lab first. You know, to get our foot in the door. And why did you need me? Like I told you, spooky arseholes moved in while I was getting all this stuff together. A month ago, the place was empty, and now it's all spooked up. They're not really spooky, are they? No, man. They're spooky, all right. It's just that they would also probably call the police if we started cooking speed in there. But the sign was way off, too. I couldn't feel the love at all. So, what now? This is it. Judgment time. Give me your cash. Ask for a bribe first. <laughs> Pack up and report to Precinct 41. Arrest them. Get lost. I don't want to see you again. Evict them. Let's do this clean. No speed lab. Just a club for anodic music. Proceed with the club. It wouldn't work without the lab. Do what you have to to keep the club alive. Proceed with both. I have to look into the spooker situation before I can decide what to do with you. Uh, give me your cash. Ask for a bribe first. Come on, man. He looks really, really surprised. He, he looks surprised. The young man doesn't move. His earrings rattle from the tension. With his jaw clenched, he says, No fucking way. Yes fucking way. The would-be leader points at his friend. His finger shakes in the Without air. Without a word, the other speed freak pulls a $21, red one dollars, out of the thanks. toolbox and hands it to you. The disdain is palpable. His eyes pierce you like lightning as he lets go of the wallet. I would have to look into the spooker situation before I can decide what to do with you. We can continue on an amiable path, right? No more misunderstandings, no more lies. Before you go, is there anything else you need other than all our money? <laughs> Hush, Noid. I know Noid has his signs, but what's the deal with Egghead there? He's a quiet man, mostly communicates through music, and by being a master of ceremonies. Uh, what's a master of ceremonies? How do you communicate with him? Uh, what's a master of ceremonies? You know, a host, a declaimer of slogans. He's a performer, gets the people going. Interesting, sire. A bit like you, then. An MC, for short. How do you communicate with him? Well, he's just kind of here. I don't really know how to communicate with him. Have you ever really talked to him? Yeah, sometimes. When I like stumble and find my way into his center, you have to hear a lot of hardcore to the mega first though. The man smiles mysteriously, choosing to let the beat speak for itself. I get it, he's a puzzle. That's it for now. As always, we'll be right here. Waiting patiently for the news. Yeah! Alright. We're close. 
true hard full car hard car hard car to the mega internally coherent all car all right yeah he furrows his brow hard car ah! no but seriously i'm a little worried it is a the question is what is the question just answer the question that would have been good if i had asked you a question but i didn't now it's just idiotic but there was a question we're close true hard hard car hard car internally co all car all right he furrows his hard car ah the question is what is the question just answer the question but there was no all right we're close true hard hard car Hard car, internally coherent. All car, all right. He furrows his hard car. The question is, what is the question? But there was. All right. The club, true. Hard, hard car, internally coherent. Good morning, yeah. One, two, three. Yako Qatar, the place to be. I'm beginning to think this really doesn't have anything to do with the case, but Yekokata is a catastrophe zone, a desolate wasteland, and can't be the place to be. Yekokata is a hardcore place! An intricate system of irrigation networks pockmarking the earth. Intermittent seas of phosphorus mud, ripped tarpauling, fluttering in the wind. A pair of molten rubber boots also comes to mind. All in all, a truly hardcore place. Solve the egghead puzzle. There has to be some way to talk to this person. You just haven't found it yet. It's definitely not about signs. What if you try again? Find your way out of this, mate. Yeah. The club. True. Hard. Hard car. Yeah. This young man adds a capital G before the H in his yags and args. This produces a guttural Gottwaldian accent and makes him sound more animal, more in it. Or maybe it's not Gottwaldian. Maybe it's Oranese. Probably an homage to Oranier, where Arno van Eyck is from, judging by his name. Could you be listening to an Arno van Eyck creation right now? So this is the famous van Eyck I'm hearing. You know about him? He moves his mouth, but sound doesn't come out. His eyes are the size of saucers. Looks like you've rendered him speechless. You know Van Eyck? Yeah, I'm a major Eyckhead. Your friend ACL mentioned him. No, it was just, yeah, I'm a major Eyckhead. Wow. The skinny wraith looks at you with some disbelief. So am I. So am I. He begins to shake his head so everyone would understand. Oh, is that why they call you Egghead? Because... Egghead to the mega, the K became the G, the boy became the man. The advent? Oh my god. Big close. True. Hard. Hard car. Yeah! This young man, or maybe it's not got volume. You know about him? You know Van Eyck? Your friend Sal mentioned him. Good. Good. The advent? Oh my god. Okay. Big cloud. True. Hard. Hard car. Yeah! This young man, or maybe it's... You know about... You know Van Eyck? Oh, well, it really is him. It's an honest to God Van Eyck Pete. Well, actually, a reworking of a peppy poppy and arsos track. But let's not get too deep into that old mess. The advent? Oh my God. Okay. Big cloud. True. Hard. Hard car. Yeah! This young man, or maybe... The Y to the E to the A 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 to the G to the H to the exclamation mark. Yeah! Oh my God. True. Hard car. Hard car to the mega. Here comes the now. The cloud. True. Hard car. Hard car. Internally coherent. All car. All right. Yeah! Please tell me what exactly are you doing? Gotta get the people going! Why? I'm the party boy. It's my job. What is a party boy? Hardcore party 25-7 beyond the winter's orbit style! There is a place far away in Cutler, beyond a certain latitude known as 
winter's orbit, where there are 25 hours in a day. It is a tremendously cold place, abandoned to drunks and failed rock stars, full of etonite, depression, and half-finished ski-flying hills. The Suru live there. The club, true, hardcore, hardcore, internally coherent. All car, all right. Gotta get the people going. Yeah, record. The club, true, hard, hardcore, internally coherent. All car, all gotta get the people going. I'm the party boy. It's my job. I think I'm also a party boy. Two on a track. All right. The club, true, hard, hardcore, internally co all car. He furrows his brow. The question is, what is the question? Okay. But there was. The club, true. Hard, hard cut, internally coherent. All car, all right. He furrows. Hard. Is it though? I was just thinking that a moment ago. One mind. One... All right. The club, true. Hard, full car. It's hard car. I don't know what to say to that. Skip a D, skip a danger. I am the rearranger. Your cop training did not prepare. The close. True. Hard. Full. Cop. It's hard car. Skip a D. Your cop training. The close. True. Hard. Full. Hard car. Yeah! This young man adds a capital G. Or maybe it's not got volume. Ma you know about him? You know Van Eyck? Wow! The skinny wraith. So am I! Oh! Aked the advent? The club. True. Hard cut. Hard cut. Internally cohe. All car. All right! He furrows. Hard cut. Is it though? What is it? I mean, really? The question is, what is the question? No, but Ooh. seriously, I'm a bit worried it isn't. He frowns, then starts bobbing his head back and forth once more. The skin on your back is crawling. For a second, you can't even hear the music anymore. There is a hawthorn tree on Rue de Songe's Lane, right next to the canal. You said you were worried. What do you think is wrong with the music? Are you a thought reader? Why are your why are there lungs on your belt buckle? Lungs are for love. La more la compassion, la auto simpler. Why would lungs be for love? When Dolores Day was anointed innocence, her lungs started glowing through her body. For the world loved her, and she loved it back. Yeah. Why wouldn't they be? Are the lungs not the place where you hold the breath of your soul? Really? Love! In a woman's lungs! Lonely as I am, I'm not afraid! This strange, damaged feeling grows on and on! Cause I've never loved someone like you before! You said you were worried. What do you think is wrong with the music? There's nothing wrong with it. I'm still in love with the hardcore. He turns pensive all of a sudden. Sometimes I just feel like anodic music is in its infancy, you know? For example, take this Arno van Eyck jam I've been pumping for the last months and will continue pumping for the rest of 51. Isn't something holding it back from being hyper? He thinks for a moment and his expression clears. It's like it's only ultra. I think it's super hardcore, but you're right. It's not hyper hardcore. If anything, it sounds a bit proto, like it's not fully formed yet. You might be a moribund alcoholic and a failed cop, but you are pretty certain a thing cannot be both proto and hardcore. It's proto, not hardcore at all. Wow, culture cop. I think you might be right, but how could it become hardcore then? I know it in my heart, but cannot sink it in my head. If this is not hardcore, how could anything be? Sounds especially like a question. I thought the question was, what is the question? Try to think of anything. Try to think if anything could make it 
hardcore. Wait, I just remembered something. I'm the police. <laughs> I can't help you with this right now. Um, sounds suspiciously like a question. No! This is the answer! Try to think if anything could make it harder. What? Guys, there's something happening in his head. Think even harder. Oh yeah! He's doing it! But you're not. This is almost certainly a matter that surpasses the limits of reason. My imagination fails me. I know! So does mine! Wait, I um, I can't help you. Wait, I just remembered something. I'm the police. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The young man is bursting with anticipation. Nothing. Me being the police isn't going to help us. Actually, it's more likely to hinder us. And I have a job to do instead of this absurd idiot. Actually, it's more likely. Nothing. Oh. I can't help you with this right now. I need something else. Something extra. Yeah! Are you a thought reader? No nation, the trans nation. No war, the class war. So you're not a thought reader. You're a communist. He's not a communist. It's just something he likes to yell. He picked it up from a tape jockey at the Palaceum. She was a communist, though. Yeah, with the rebel yell. Best not to be a communist. Having extreme views on issues is detrimental to understanding all sides. Tom, does that mean you're a thought reader? Don't be a lunatic. Of course he is. Germania just yells random things. Odds are, sooner or later one of them will come off as thought reading. Yeah! Revachon imperative! Unless you were thinking Revachon imperative right now. Anyway, I've had a similar thing happen with eggs yelling. I know what you mean. But I was thinking of a shell imperative. That's fucked up, man. Lying like that. And a cop, too. Best not to be a communist. Oh, sure. I can do that. If you want that, I can avoid taking a stand. <laughs> Please don't turn him into a moralist. I don't even know what to say to that. Be a moralist, Egghead. The balance needs your help. Don't be a moralist. Wait, what am I saying? You should consider your choices carefully and rationally. Don't be a moralist. That path requires a sensible examination of all nuances unattainable to most people. Become a moralist. <laughs> your guess, Egghead. You guess Egghead is a moralist now. <laughs> Tell me something else, Egghead. It's time to compromise! <laughs> He looks at you with an almost impossibly wide shining grin, looking to see if you approve. Obviously, one shouldn't get too hasty with their decision making. Almost there, could use just a bit more something. Incremental change! Appropriate. I'm swiftly moving toward a solution which pleases nobody. <laughs> you feel Jermaine Egghead's <laughs> smile is too enthusiastic. <laughs> but it'll have to do for now. Is your name, is your real name Jermaine? Darkhorn Hardcore! Jermaine Egghead! Um, basically, yes it is. Alright, goodbye Egghead. Alright! Here comes the night! Why does art inspire you so much? It does, yes, but what is art? No, art is for arrogant blowhards. Why am I getting this? It does, yes, but what is art? Excellent question. Art is a diverse range of visual, literary, auditory, and performative creativity. It's an expression of imagination and technical skill. Additionally, it's history, criticism, and pure enjoyment. In short, art is the highest form of human communication representation, narrative, emotion, and agency intertwine. Would I fit into the art world, I mean? Have you looked in the mirror lately? You have the exact features of a savage art critic, with that beard and those clothes, disheveled and prophetic. Perhaps you should try to critique architecture too. Hold on, is architecture also art? I guess I... I have been feeling critical lately. <laughs> That's stupid. Architecture is stupid. 
I guess I have been feeling critical. Hold on, is architecture also art? Of course not. It's autism. Oh. Box drawing. Masturbation with a ruler and a sextant or whatever they use. You should demean and criticize the genteel institution of architecture while extolling the virtues of the pure arts. Wait, what about music? Is it art? I guess I have been feeling critical. Is music art? Only the most experimental kind. I guess I have been feeling critical lately. Yes, you seek substance. No vapid representations and reproductions of social mores as may manifest in stuffy biennials. We're talking real living art here. Become the art cop. Half art critic, half cop. Wait, but don't I have to be 100% cop to get the case finished and all that? Okay, if 50% art critic is what's needed to free me from road repetition, so be it. No, I cannot risk another copo diversion at this point. Go away. Opt out. Bravo. Continue. Then, the mediocre and vulgar epigones of the world. So what if everything is incomprehensibly shit and you can see it? Take no responsibility. This was a good call. That guy probably thinks forensics is autism too. <laughs> Physical instrument, pain threshold, pain threshold. What about now? The large headed. Incremental progress! 17. Yeah! It's still the same. I'm not going to be able to do it. Okay, this is the outfit I've decided to go with. Um, so. Logic minus perception. That's just the best coat, you know. Um, drama. This one, which I still don't really know what it is. It's just does it just give us more options, more dialogue options, maybe? Um, interfacing perception. Um, I don't know what this means. To indirect modes of taxation. I don't know what that means. I don't want to take, I don't want negative perception, I don't want negative visual calculus, um, I don't want negative authority, but our authority is pretty high, so maybe it won't affect us so much, maybe, we'll try it, we'll try it. The shaggy hit girl kneels on the... So you talk to my associates, right? Are you going to help us? With the church, I can't I mean. say, gotta ask questions first. Shoot. Your associates tried to use me to set up a drug lab. I'm guessing you knew of this plan. I did, and I'm sorry for what it's worth, which isn't much. This is why I didn't go into the tent. Typical delinquency. You don't get to choose your posse, they choose you. Mine are idiots, but they're mine. I tried to talk Andre out of it. I even tried not to lie to you. Indeed. She merely tried to omit the truth instead. Instead, you opted to admit the truth. It's the same thing. Should have tried harder. Misleading a cop is no joke. I don't care. I'm loco. I just wanted you to know. Instead, you opted to admit the truth. It's the same thing. I know, but I knew you see through their plan too. I'm not an idiot. I should have been able to control them, and I will in the future. I promise. May I ask? What did you tell them? That I'm going to decide after I've looked into the church situation. Oh, right. That's wise. Take your time. Thanks. <laughs> what the fuck? The others told me you went inside the church. What did you see in there? Oh, that. You're not going to believe me. There's no point in me telling you. She's less prone to blurt it out, crab man, than the others. We'll see. Go ahead and tell me. Okay. I went in and I saw a woman next to one of those machines there. Noid calls it a mainframe. She was dressed like someone who's been raised by their grandmother. You know, strange old clothes. Had this absent expression. Didn't say anything. Just stood still. Go on. And then, you know, right behind her, a man crawled down the wall. Upside down like a crab. Down the church wall. I think the woman didn't even know he was there. He was completely silent. He stopped right before he got to the floor, then just hung there like that, looking at me, right at me. 
I fucking turned around and walked out. End of story. Like a crab, you say? The lieutenant nods, his face is stone. What did this crab man look like? It was too dark. I couldn't tell exactly. She shakes her head. Come on. She obviously could. She already went into detail. Come on, quit stalling. Stalling on me. What did he look like? You were right. I don't believe you. You were wrong. I do. Come on, quit, quit stalling. He looked like a banger, okay? He was all muscular and stuff. Had a mesh tank top. I know it sounds ridiculous, but that only made it scarier in a way. The crab and the banger? The lieutenant raises an eyebrow. Yes, a banger. As in a mess gang member. I know what it sounds like, but that's what I saw. A gangster crab man? Yeah, I don't believe you. I don't blame you. I mean, I wouldn't believe me either. I'm surprised Noid did. Andre I expected, but Noid... She shakes her head. I'd like to know more about your associates. My associates? I haven't she... got much to say about them. Just answer the question. What do you mean? You just know so You must know something about them. Of course I do. I just don't tell people about my friends and who they are and so on. I don't provide information on them. To the cops. What about you? Tell me something about yourself. Aha, okay, maybe I'll ask later. What about you? Tell me something about yourself. Me? I'm a silver bird. Uh-huh, okay. Maybe I'll ask later la later about this. Don't know what makes you think it'll be any different later, but... God, these bitches are crazy. Fucking drugs. <laughs> Alright, that's it for now. Crazies. Ugh. <sighs>